everyone. So remember, first procedure is you only get three colors. I grabbed four for the sake of this demonstration. I mean five, sorry. But you only take three colors at a time. See, one, two, three. Um, once you're done scooping the color, you'll return it. Now, to avoid what we see here in this one, where um, that little bit of green got in there, um, you need to be scooping it out using a little stick like this that we have over by the sink, um, instead of putting your paintbrush directly in there, because you want to avoid um, combining colors. You have to kind of consider these as like your paint tubes, like your own personal paint tubes, and you don't want to mix colors in them, okay? And we need to share them with the other classes. So, um, to start off with, maybe I want to make a darker blue. So this, guys, this is called a shade. Remember, we talked about shades it's when you add black to something. So what I will do is I'll take this and I will scoop out an amount I need onto my palette. And you really don't need as much as you think. You only need like just a little bit. I'll scrape off the rest. Okay, now before I go to scoop the other color, I want to even get this wet, kind of like a paintbrush. I want to wipe it off so I'm not going to have colors mixing, at least not there, okay? So I'll put my lid back on, it doesn't dry out. These dry very quickly, so you do need to make sure you're using the lids. Now I wanna make this darker, so I will add, black is a very powerful color, so I'm only gonna add just the tiniest smidge, just like that much, and add that on there. And then I can just stick mine in my little stick in there and call it good. Okay, so I've got my two colors. You can either mix using your paintbrush or you can use this stick, but I'm a paintbrush person. So I will get a little bit of water in my paintbrush and I will just start mixing these together. So it's going to be a little bit of a darker blue. It's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a shade, but not a very, very dark blue. So I'm mixing that in. You're so right. Thank you for pointing that out. So you put the lid back on. Okay, and then you can just paint some on. So if I only have a little bit of paint on here, just like a little bit, and then I scrape off whatever excess I have, I only have a tiny little bit of paint on my brush. And I do this, it creates that kind of scratchy look. That's called dry brushing, okay? So that's one of the things we talked about when we move these. So one of the techniques is dry brushing. That's something you can use for one of your expressions. Another technique we talked about was glazing. So if I want to make this blue um, a little more green, I have two options. I can glaze it with a green, it'll be more of a green blue, or I can glaze it with a yellow and make it even more green, because green, blue, I mean yellow, blue make green, okay? So I've got my blue on there. I'm thinking I want to make it just a blue, a more green blue. So I'm going to do a glaze. So you can see that in here too. There's a little bit of green that someone left in there. That's why you have to be really careful to make sure your sticks are totally clean so that you're not mixing colors, okay? So I'm going to pick up some yellow, stick it on my palette, okay? So this back in here, put the cap on my yellow. All right, so I could always just make green by mixing my yellow with my blue on the palette, but I really like glazing because it's kind of cool because like if you look closely enough, you can see that there are two separate colors, but when you stand far away, you get that sort of effect. Um, normally you would use a glazing medium or liquid, um, but you can just do this with water, just get a little bit of water out of here. This helps mostly to have clean water Mine's a little dirty, I don't feel like getting up to change it, but you can always get up and change the water. So you get a little bit of water and add it and just thin out your yellow a little bit. So it's not you know, super watery, but it's still a lot thinner than it was before. You can even add a little more, just a bit. Okay, so it's already turning that green because I have the blue in the water and that's okay. But, so it's still gonna have this glazed effect. So, the trick with glazing too is this layer has to be dry. And I put my finger on it and it's dry. Okay, so to glaze, we'll just paint over top of it like that. Okay. And so, and then maybe I'm feeling like, uh, 
that still is a little too, almost too yellow now, I want more blue. So to get more of my blue, I can come back and then add a little bit of water to my blue color over here. I'm just gonna mix that watery over here. Make sure this is dry. Uh, it's still a little wet. See, I can pick it up with my, my finger. It's still a little wet. So I'm gonna wait just like two seconds. You can also glaze just to create a color that's lighter without adding white to it. See, I can take this glaze on here and that's gonna be a lighter blue than before. All right. Still, still wet. Okay, so that's, got, that's one thing. If you try glazing it while it's still wet, you totally ruin it. So I, that's why I'm always double checking just to make sure. Okay, so in the meantime, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a tint. So maybe I want a more buttery yellow um, and a tint you use white. So really white, so such a fragile color. I really wanna make sure my stick here is totally clean. So I want to try and get next to nothing. I might even use just the other end here. Scoop out my white and put my palette. Okay, so if I want to make a tint of yellow, I can just take a little bit of my yellow, put it over here, a little bit of my white, mix it together. And as I'm going, if it's if it's too light or too uh, too dark of a yellow, I can get more white and just add it in. The more you add, the lighter it gets. Uh, it goes with any kind of color mixing. The more you have of it, the more it's going to be like that color. So I'm mixing it, and then I can paint it on here. And now, see now it's mixing in with this dry brushing I was doing earlier. But you can also kind of dry brush to create a glazed effect. You guys see that? You can also dry brush to create a glazed effect. So you can still see that blue underneath of it because I only have just the tiniest bit of paint on my brush. So that's the dry brushing. It looks pretty cool. Okay. So I'm being, I'm willing to bet that this is dry now. So I'm going to come back with my blue glaze. I'm going to get this wet again. So remember, I thought I didn't think it was um, thought it was too yellow, and you thought need more blue. So I'm going to get this blue glaze just by adding a bit of water to it, and I'll come back over. Ah, now that's the ticket. That's what we're looking for. Then you can kind of smooth it out, and if you ever want to, you can also just dab up some areas, like if you want to lighten it or add a texture. See, so now you get that lovely bluish green that I was looking for earlier. All right, so you guys notice so far, when I'm cleaning it, I usually just kind of shake it in there, even scrape it on the bottom a little. And then I will wipe it off on the sides like this. All right, so I cleaned off my brush in the water and then I never ever, I can leave the stick in there, that's fine. But if I leave this in here, it's gonna loosen the glue that holds the bristles in. And it's also going to bend it as well so that it'll start to get kind of a uh, like spread out look like that. So I always, always, always wash it off, you know, scrape off the extra water, dry it off with my towel, and then I set it aside. Never, ever, 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 ever leave it in your water, okay? So I've done glazes. I've done some dry brushing here. I showed you like a, a shade and a tint. Um, but what if you want to do a tone? Tone's like a, a more of a rare case, but that's where you add gray to a color to get it in between a shade and so on and so forth. And it kind of dulls it down. You guys don't want to always use the pure color because the pure color isn't always the way it really looks in nature. So maybe I want to paint a leaf, but leaves aren't always perfectly bright green. They're sometimes kind of grayish color. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take some of my green color here. Clean off my, my stick. Pick up that green. I'm gonna put it over here.
And then clean it off, clean off your stick, cap this. And now I need some black and white to make the gray. So I'll get some black. Actually, I'm gonna get some white first because I don't wanna risk getting black in the white. So I'll get some white first. I'll put some on there. Ooh, now I'm running out of room on my palette. So I am going to wipe off what I don't need. Kind of find a dry area to put this on. That's good, right there. So I got my white. I'm gonna clean it off again. I'm gonna get my black. Put it next to the white. And then here's an example of how you can just mix these together with your stick. You can just start working that in together. Okay, so I had a nice gray color now. So this is how you make a tone. You add gray to a color. I'm cleaning off this one more time. Okay, so you add gray to a color and I want a green. So I have my green over here in this corner. Got my gray over here. So I'm gonna pick up some of my gray. I'm gonna move it over to my green. Take a little bit of green and mix those together. And you see, it, it kind of gives that a nice, it's not like super light, but it's not that bright green anymore either. So it, it really helps to be able to know how to do these so that you can get more realistic look. So I'm gonna, I'll paint a quick little leaf here. If I want it to be a little less dry, I can add a little, a tiny bit of water to it so it's almost like a glaze to kind of round off those edges. Okay. And then I'm just gonna show you really fast how you can apply glazing to this. So I have kind of like a base layer. Uh, this is what we call an underpainting. I'm gonna clean some of that off with a little bit of wet wet water wow yeah water is always wet what am i talking about as opposed to dry water okay so this is still wet i let it dry a little i could put some more on to keep make it wet again so i want to show you guys all the prima a little bit so i can make this wet again adding a little bit of water to the paint and adding it back so this is all the Prima, wet on wet, where you do it where the paint's still wet. Now this is harder to do with oil, um, acrylics because acrylics dry very quickly. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna wet this up again so I can get that wet on wet look. Okay, and so while that's still wet, here's how you can do wet on wet. Um, it's a kind of fun way to blend things. So maybe I wanna add a little bit of yellow, yellowy green that I have over here. So I'll pick up some of my yellow. And I can blend that in. Now that was really watery, so I want to show you what it looks like with just plain yellow paint. I can dab that up and see what happens. So that was kind of cool because I totally just picked up all of that paint, so I'm going to put this back down again. Okay, so again, with the wet on wet, take a little bit of paint, put it on a wet spot. And you see how it just works into that? It's like blending it right on there. <laughs> it blends it right on there into the wet paint. So that's a good way to blend if you want to have a nice shade, like shading. So that gives you an idea for Alla Prima. Maybe I want to make this darker. So I'll take a little bit of my dark blue and work that in down here to that dark stuff. Okay, and if I'm doing it, on the stuff that's wet, it's going to blend it better. Okay, see how that's blending really nicely? I'm gonna come in with this to blend it a bit more. Okay. 
So that gives you an idea of a la prima. And then I'm going to show you impasto. Impasto is when you put it on so thick that you can see it. This is a really cool way to sort of create um, texture on your painting. So I want to show veins in this leaf. Um, and I want this blue to be darker to show these veins. So I'm going to add a little bit of green to it to make it a green blue. And then I'm going to add some black to it. So let me get my stick. I'm going to pick up some of this blue and scoot it over here. OK, scoot in the blue. I'm going to pick up my green and move it over here in my blue and start mixing it just to get a nice green blue just straight on the palette. Get some more green. Okay, let's scrape off the excess. Now I need a little bit of black, so I've got to wash off my stick really fur, really fast. Okay, and then I want it to be darker because I'm creating a tone. So I'll grab some of my black, put it on the palette. Stick my stick there. All right, so now I can take my brush, bring a little bit of black, mix in with this blue green, and it'll make this very, very, very dark, which is exactly what I want. It almost doesn't, I mean, the camera is not picking it up. It's still got some blue in it, but it's very, very dark. And then I'm just for kicks, I'm going to add some yellow too, kind of make it more green like. Nice, dark, dark green. Maybe some more black if I want it to be darker, which I do. So I'm going to take some more black, mix it in. All right, so here's how you do impasto. You want your paint to be thick, so you'll pick up a lot on your brush. Like that, so I'll just goof on there. And then you can paint it directly on. And if you want it to be thicker, you just paint more on. So I'll grab some more. Smooth it out a little. So it's kind of hard to see, but there is a texture there. You can even dab it on if you want more texture. Now this will take a while to dry, so I really need to be careful around it while I'm painting. All right, so I've got that texture. Really liking it. I'm going to add some more veins here. Oh, I put too much water in. That's the thing. If you put water in it, it's going to be really hard for it to have that texture. So I just made that mistake. You can still see how thick that is. Okay, and then I can also use it to bring out my lights. And that's actually the most common way to use impasto is using a lot of white. So I'm going to get some more white paint because I ran out. So I'm going to get some more here. I want a really light, light green. So I'm going to pick up some of that, work it into the white that I've got. So it's just going to be a very, very gentle, light green. So I'm going to use this for my highlights. As you can see that there. Okay. And then I want to pick up a lot of that paint, a big, big dollop of paint. And I'm going to just put it there, put it there, and put it there. Get some more. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. And then just glob it on top here. And 
that's that's some pasta. I'll see if I can pick this up so you can see how thick that is. Maybe. Eh, you can still see because it shines a little. So that's how thick it is. And that's how you do impasto. Okay, so now that I've got my brush washed. Hey, so now that I've got this wash, you know my protocol is to wash it in the sink with soap and water. Um, this one's really small, so it's hard to show you. But what you gotta do when you're washing it is you really wanna make sure that every bristle gets cleaned, every individual bristle. So what I will usually do is I'll put my soap on it and I'll just work it in back and forth with my fingers like this. I'll work in my soap and then I'll rinse it off and then I will dry it and set it somewhere safe so that the bristles don't dry like sideways or anything. You want them to dry straight. All right, and then this being wet, I wanna put it somewhere where it's gonna stay safe until it's totally dry. So you can set it over on the counters, but that means that you need to be extra careful because other people's wet artworks are gonna be there as well. So just so, show a little consideration and help. People have put a lot of work into these and so we wanna take good care of them. Okay, so um, that's the procedure for a lot of these paintings. We got dry brush brushing, glazing here, um, a la prima in the leaf and then impasto on the leaf. I showed you guys tints, tones, and shades. And then finally, there's one thing I forgot to mention. With your guys' artworks, I expect to see that you show me that you know your color schemes. So you're gonna wanna choose one of the color schemes you learned about. I want you guys to show me some of the color schemes that I've, you guys learned about on GoQuest. And I want you to choose one. And the best way to do a color scheme is to keep it your artwork about 80% of the color scheme. And then if you need to use other colors, just a little bit here and there. But the majority of it, you wanna use a color scheme. And guys, this color scheme right here, this is analogous, okay? Because I have blue, green, and yellow, which are all three next to each other on the color wheel. And I mean, yeah, I used some black and some white, but I blended it in with it, so it was okay. So having a limited color scheme will also make your artwork way better. If you're just putting every color on there, it's just gonna look really busy and kind of icky and muddy. Um, it's not gonna look very interesting. Keeping it simple makes it way prettier and way more fun to look at.